Welcome back. This week we've got an interesting engine project to share with you, but much of the time was spent preparing one of the students for a state level collision repair competition, which you'll see some of that in this episode as well. Thanks for tuning in. This O2 Yukon was towed into us as a no crank problem that a couple other people had looked at and couldn't figure it out. Uh, got it in here, put it in the air, and uh, started trying to turn the engine over with a breaker bar. And it was very quick to discover that it would only rotate about 25 degrees or so. So there's something definitely uh, hard holding the engine from, uh, from rotating. Um, when uh, we were turning it over, we could hear a hard knock coming from the bell housing area behind the engine. Uh, so the first thing the students did was to attempt to diagnose something in there. Uh, flex plate bolt, torque converter bolt possibly coming out and wedging in the webbing between the back of the block uh, and the flex plate. It's happened before, it's kind of rare, but it does happen. Uh, but they were then quick to figure out that the noise, uh, not the noise, but the problem wasn't actually coming from there. So you're going to see what the students found. This is a pretty interesting project. Uh, very happy that it came in. It's much like that valve that was bent on the Tahoe that we're just about done with. Uh, we don't see these kind of problems very often, especially in a high school setting. So I'm very happy when these types of things come in. It really gives the kids a, a better understanding of the engine and uh, the functionality of what's going on inside of them when they're running, or in this case, not running. Uh, what also uh, is interesting to me is that a couple of guys that already looked at it, uh, one of them said it was a fuel pump. Uh, very, very far from the truth. Maybe back in the 60s and 70s that could have been a, uh, an issue with a mechanical fuel pump, but given today's vehicles, uh, that there's no way that's possible. Uh, so, which also reminds me that there are a lot of people out there that work on vehicles, but there's a much lower percentage of those people that are actually fixing them. Uh, so there's a difference between working on a vehicle and fixing a vehicle. Um, but anyway, I'm training, hopefully, students to fix the vehicles and understand the problems and repair them correctly, and that's why we do what we do. Uh, so again, I hope you enjoy uh, watching with these students, uh, what they find in this vehicle. First, the students use a boroscope to look inside the bell housing to see if there's anything that seems out of place. So in rotating the crankshaft, we get a hard thump both directions, and it is coming from inside the bell housing. I already have an idea of what I think it is, but I want the students to see it for themselves once they pull it apart. So the job is going to be to remove the drive shafts and to start pulling the transmission back a little bit. Be removing the torsion bars before we do that we're taking the adjusters marking them with white out so we can put them back to their uh, original location when we put it all back together Since we didn't find anything inside that bell housing, we're taking off the oil pan to check inside the engine. Tough? Tough. Tough? Yeah. We're good. Okay.
Unfortunately, this part of the video doesn't show the problem, but you're about to see it. Here's the connecting rod cap. And here's about half of the connecting rod. The rest of it is still up in the engine. Here's our broken connecting rod. It took a lot of force to break that. With the broken connecting rod out of the way, we're now able to rotate the engine so that we can start removing uh, the torque converter bolts. Since we know the engine is bad, we're going to uh, separate these two so we can begin pulling the engine. Okay, so now they can rotate the engine to get the final bolt out. Now they'll take out the final bolt and we'll be ready to uh, lower it and start taking the engine out. Put the vehicle back down on the ground, the students are draining the coolant and removing the radiator and heater hoses. I'm here with my five Skills USA state competitors. I'm going to let them introduce themselves and tell you which competitions they'll be competing in. My name is Adi Quinteros. I'm competing in the MLR competition. My name is Eric Poya. I'm competing in the AST competition. My name is Alejandro Galeno. I'm competing in the collision repair competition. My name is Jonah Smith, and I'm competing in the motorcycle technology competition. My name is Dylan Soxlager. I'm competing in the diesel technology competition. Because of the shutdown, most of the state level competitions have been reduced to a written test which four of those young men have already taken and are waiting on the results. Alejandro doing the collision repair had a series of tasks that he had to perform that I had to film for him. And when he did that submission with all those different tasks, we were not allowed to do any editing because I had to show him from start to finish on the different tasks so that it showed that he's the one that did the repair. However, what you're about to see are just segments that I've edited into this so you can get an idea of some of the things that he had to do for his competition. Hope you enjoy it. First, I'm going to do three flat plug welds. Next, I'm going to do three vertical plug welds. Now I'm going to finish with the three overhead welds. The camera might not pick it up, so I'm running a wire underneath this straight edge to show that there is a dent. I'm going to demonstrate how to use a tram gauge to measure the front of a vehicle for square. I've set the tram gauge to take a measurement between two fixed points. Now, I'll be measuring the same points on the opposite side. This vehicle is square, but if it weren't, we could use factory measurements with the tram gauge to make a pull until it's within specifications. Okay. <laughs> 
Power steering pump in place on our Tahoe. The students are reapplying our power steering pump pulley with our power steering pump pulley tool. So you see I'm holding the outside piece and turning the inner nut and that's what's pressing the pulley on. You see the pulley getting closer to aligning with our water pump down there. Power steering pump fully in place, now putting the air conditioning compressor back on. Here they're reinstalling the belt tensioner before installing the belt. Next time on Bulldog Builds, we'll be closer to getting our Tahoe running. We'll see what that customer wants to do about replacing the engine on his Yukon. And Alejandro will be back to work on the 69 Nova. You're welcome, Andrew. See you next week.